experience as a priest, especially when I visit Greek people in the hospital, often they'll, they'll say to me, if they are very faithful people, they'll say to me regarding their suffering, and perhaps even regarding their faith, if they are if they're given a diagnosis that they are going to repose, that they say often, Ola ine gramena. Ola ine gramena. This means in Greek, all is written. This is what the chanter of my previous parish told me, very faithful man, when he received his diagnosis that he had Lou Gehrig's disease. He said, Ola ine gramena. It's a statement of faith. It means all is written. It is believing, a statement of belief that all is in God's hands. Everything is in God's hands, in God's thoughts, in His control, in ways that are ineffable to man, but are part of God's plan. It's a statement of faith that whatever is happening, good or bad, its reason is ultimately beyond human knowledge, but it's a statement of faith that it is part of God's providence. And so by saying, Ola ina gramena, it is a promise, a challenge to oneself to align oneself with whatever God is trying to accomplish in his ineffable ways. Now, this morning, December 27th, the Sunday also after the Holy Nativity, we have these two great accounts both of Joseph, of the, the flight to Egypt with the Christ child and with the Theotokos, and also we have the feast of St. Stephen, the, who is called the Protomartyrus, the first martyr, the chief of the martyrs, <coughs> as it begins today. These two great stories about people who were confronted with something that was astounding and not understandable to them at the time. You know, Joseph. When he found out that Mary would with the Christ child, he was astounded. And he knew the, the Jewish law, all the things that pertain to him, and especially to the male <coughs> Kokos, being someone who was pregnant, is seen outside of wedlock. And he wanted to put her away quietly. And it took an archangel, Gabriel, speaking the words of God, to explain him for his own benefit, and for the benefit of the Christian church, and for the benefit of our souls, that this is part of God's plan, it's part of God's prophecies, it's part of God's writings. Ola ina gramena. It is written, God's plan, Joseph, that this is happening. And when Joseph heard, was told in a dream to flee to Egypt because of the terrible thing that that evil king Herod was going to do, Joseph understood, he did not say, why me, Lord? I quit. He could have walked away from the Theotokos. He might have, might have said, from the very beginning of learning that she was with child, if I can't be a husband to her in the way that I want, what is the point of being married to her? Sometimes, in various points of our, our own lives, we may ask similar questions. Why am I going through all this? What's in it for me? Why do I stick with this difficult job or task? Why did my beloved one to pass away? Why should I stay with my spouse? Why am I going to school? Why do I endure all this nonsense? Why do I have to go to, why do I go to church every Sunday? What is being accomplished? Why has my life turned out in this way? Joseph and Stephen could have said some various personal variations of these statements I just read and applied them to their own lives, but they were faithful people. Taught Joseph by an angel himself, taught by his tradition, and Stephen taught by Jesus himself, a disciple of Christ himself, who knew how to handle the things that were going to be facing them. In the case of Stephen, happily willing to not just die for Christ in a very awful way of being stoned, but while he was doing it, because he was so trained by Christ, so willing to, un to understand that of God's providence and plan, that he imitated Christ. 
It says in the book of Acts, of imitating Christ, he said, Lord, forgive them for they do not know what they're doing. These people, they have these stones, and they're stoning them. And also, by his faithfulness to Christ, Stephen was able to see Jesus sitting at the right hand of God. This is the fruit of this life of faith, of accepting things that are holy, hola ina cremena, that are part of God's plan. And rather than trying to fight them, we dignify them by saying that we accept these things that happen to us, and we try with the help of God to make the best of them, to be heroic in living through them, and using them as fruits that, that, as part of our, self, our salvation. You know, in many ways, it's easier to not be a Christian. It's easier to be selfish. But a selfish life is not a fruitful life. No one can be selfish and have a fulfilled life. No one can be selfish and have a fulfilled marriage or a fulfilled parenthood or a fulfilled childhood. It is easier to, in many ways perhaps, not to be a Christian, but it is the flavor of life, it is giving life, it is the purpose of life, it gives us life and fulfills our life when we follow Christ. So Joseph did stay with Mary. He decided to be a real man of faith and remain, remain united with her because of God's will, not of his own. We can learn a lot about our own personal relations if we take Joseph's obedience as our model. It may be more difficult to be a Christian, but being one bears many, many hundred times of fruit. And Joseph's obedience bore fruit, both in the small scale and in the large scale. He saved Mary's child from the sword. He also protected the Lord, being a, a being as, a, as the Lord, being the Christ child, and being a, and Joseph was was a participant in bringing salvation to the world. But to Joseph, this fruit, at best, could only be understood and enjoyed after the fact. Some Bible scholars say that after this flight of Egypt and after Joseph came back to Nazareth with the Christ child and with the Theotokos, it said that he disappears from the Bible. And many, many scholars say that it's because at that time he reposed, he passed away, he died, because he was a very old man, even when he was betrothed to Mary. And so the question is, did Joseph even live as a human being to understand what this child would become? Would he understand the miracles that Jesus would do, revealing that he is God? Would he understand the wisdom and the teachings that with divine authority that many, many people would hear and be comforted and consoled? Inspired to repentance, inspired to new life. Perhaps it was never revealed to him during his life on earth, during his trip to the land of Egypt, and during his trip back from the land of Egypt to this very dangerous place of Nazareth, surrounded by, by royal guards who were obedient to the royal kings who were disobedient to God. We don't know. But we do know from his life and from his actions that how to understand that Ola Ina Dremena, all is written. And if we could follow this in our life, we will grow and grow spiritually. We will have gigantic souls, gigantic souls and hearts and minds that are open to God, yearning for God, in communion with God. And so that like St. Stephen, when he was stoned and saw the divine image of Jesus sitting at the right hand of the Father, we too may share an experience, may even, maybe even see that same vision of glory. But most especially, the greater miracle is that when St. Stephen was being stoned, he forgave, his, his, he forgave those who were stoning him in imitation of Christ. So these are two great, great accounts we have on this very special day. 
on the Sunday after the nativity of our Christ, and of the great, the feast day of the great Lord of Martyr, chief of the martyrs, St. Stephen the Deacon, whose memory we commemorate today. May through the prayer of St. Joseph the betrothed, and St. Stephen the great martyr, may they receive Christ our God to save our souls. 